looking for the record deal. We were just playing, you know. So what we did was we signed our deal on our own, you know, we said, well, this is what we want to do. We don't care for a record deal if you're not going to give us what we want, right? No, we're not restricted at all. We have complete freedom. And that because they, they like what we're doing, they like our music. It, it ended up like they ended up enjoying the music, so it's very good being on Geffen. They're 100% behind us, so no one else can react. The people at Geffen are great. <laughs> reputation. Tell me something you've done that's been wild, or tell me a story that somehow you've ended up in trouble. Um, I don't know. What do you want? What do you want? Anything. This guy, we rent vans. He goes out and wrecks vans and passes out in the middle of the street. We stay at the Gramercy Hotel here, and and the uh, one of our friends, West Arkeen, the uh, the guy jumped over the counter. His dad had a heart attack. And they didn't give him the message. And then when he yelled at the guy, the guy jumped over the counter and, and, and hit him. And then three guys jumped him and worked the hotel here in New York. So then he came up and got me. I went downstairs and, 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 and two big guys come up me with clubs. So I grabbed a huge metal sign, you know, and it was like a, a showdown. They backed off and then the cops came. And, you know, that's like the most recent thing that's happened. Tell me why there are two versions of the Appetite for Destruction album cover. Why do you think there's two versions? Well, I have to get it on tape. Well, because there's a lot of record stores, a lot of record stores and stores that sell your record that did not like the cover and had a different opinion of what it meant. And so we knew that was going to happen, but we wanted to get the cover out. So then we made another cover. And basically there's two covers because we didn't want to you know we weren't stupid we didn't want to like limit our sales and plus we like both covers and it's fun having two versions out plus it's a catch 22 because we put out the first record right i mean the first i mean we put out the first cover sold so many you know with that and then changed it and the fucking first or the the first cover the cover is inside the inner sleeve. Yeah, you so it's a catch twenty two, anyway. so it's like it doesn't really matter. You know? Are you worried that people like the PMRC will object or, or I don't really it? care about the PMRC. I don't care. I think it's stupid. I think people that are voting for people, you know, don't deserve to have somebody's wife or something like that, that that's not the person they voted for i'm not voting for who this guy decides to be with the more stickers they put on records the more records we sell yeah it's the whole it's the whole philosophy of being a teenager and rebellion you know the worse they get when the, the parents hate it, it the kids love it so it's like you know and then the parents end up finding a song they like so i like that yeah, they don't have a Yeah. Yeah. Three more days. Oh yeah. Four, three, four more days. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, we were going to do it on the original beginning of the tour, but um, we weren't ready yet. Our, our album hadn't been put out yet, and so they got White Snake, and they were real happy with that. But now White Snake is ready to um, start headlining on their own, and and they like us, and we like them, so it's like we're ready to do it. They're like, they're rolling out like the red carpet. I mean, they're giving us more lights than they usually give an opening act. They're giving us more monitors and more things. Yeah, and they're like, they're really helping us because they're, they're into what we're doing. And like, someone told me the other day, Circus Magazine told me that Vince Neil said some nice things about us. He goes, Sides, I figure that any kid that has a Guns N' Roses album has a Motley Crue album too, so this is going to be great. It's probably, yeah. think about it. I think it'll be a good show for the kids. The best tour. You know, I think, I mean, for that, for what we do, for what Motley Crue does, what we do. It's pretty it's like legit. They're putting it right together. It's like, who else, you know? There hasn't been a rumble It's, like it's pretty legit and unpretentious and not aimed at top 40 radio. You know, it, it's aimed at just coming from the heart, rock and roll. Do you think Vince being a tea toddler or at least doing these rag commercials will affect any kind of backstage annex during the you know? I think we have to do those because of other reasons. I wouldn't even want to get involved. So yeah, and I don't think it'll, it'll affect us. You know, it's like... We won't do anything to stir up any trouble on the tour, you know, in the hotel rooms is another story. Living such a quote-unquote reckless life, do you think there's any danger of burning out too early? Do you plan on being around for a couple of years? 
I'm not necessarily interested in the longevity. As far as, as long I'm, as the music sticks around. As far as I'm concerned, it's just as long as we're having, we believe in what we're doing. You know, we so care about each other enough around. to keep each other in line. You know, you know, like I saved this guy's life a couple times this week. Yeah, a, um, yeah there is. They're, they're friends of ours, and um, like we used to practice in the drummer's studio. I was a, I was an um, original singer in an old version of that band. Um, the guitar player in LA Guns, Izzy lived with him. He grew up. Him and Slash were like friends in, in high school and rival bands and stuff like that. And the name Guns N' Roses came about from Tracy Guns and Axl Rose, and I, I said, well, let's just call it Guns N' Roses, and then he went back to L.A. Guns, and I called it Slash and Steve, and, you know, we just kept the name. Do you have any uh, plans for another album? The EP is coming out? Well, the EP, yeah, the EP is planned, and then we've already talked with Geffen that we will record a double album whenever we're done touring. And hopefully... You know, hopefully we'll put out a double album, we'll see how it sounds, and, and if it's a smart move to put out a, a double record, because it's going to cost more. But we've got all the material ready for it, and we're still writing new stuff, so we have about 40 songs ready to go that we believe in. I do a special segment on MTV called Addicted to Style, and do you have any, do you want to talk about your tattoos, or, or any, any kind of fashion? Fashion? Statement. <laughs> Things that were consistent throughout members of the band. Well, I'm wearing, you know, wear whatever's laying around the hotel when you wake up, you know what I'm saying? Why don't you tell us about your tattoos? Um, a guy named Robert Benedetti does our tattoos on Sunset Strip. He does like Aussies and uh, Kevin Brady used to work there and he did Motley Cruz and stuff. And, uh, it's like I think about a tattoo a long time before I get it. Like I got the the one on my arm here, um, before we had the album cover designed, you know, Geffen saw this and liked it so much that they wanted to do a cover. And, um, I don't know, fashion is just like, I believe in wearing and doing what you want to do, not what someone tells you to do. You know, and that's what our fashion is. It's like, it's like hard, you go into a, a nice hotel, you're renting out a whole floor, you're playing a big show in a town, you know, like we're on the cool tour, you know, you're playing for like 10,000 people sometimes. And he's, they won't let you in the restaurant because of the dress code, and there's no one in it. You know, what is that? You know, and this guy's making like eight dollars an hour. You're blowing him away financially and successfully, and he's telling you you're a bum. Uh, schizo. See, I can turn it on or off. No, but I get thrown out of, out of everywhere. You know, for no real reason except for the fact this that I like to get drunk and you know, blah blah blah. But um, it's like. It's, as far as I'm concerned, it's pretty much just whatever you wear, whatever you wake up in, and you just go and do what you gotta do. About tattoos, don't go get a tattoo if you just just to get a tattoo. Get something that you plan on having for the rest. Of your, if you're gonna get one, make sure it means a lot to you, and you're gonna have it for the rest of your life. You know, like I, I when I come up with an idea for a tattoo, I think about it for a year. Do I really want that? Do I always want that on my arm? I'm not unhappy with anything I have. The only thing I'm bummed about is I got this tattoo right here, which is a Thin Lizzy album cover, and I always wanted to show it to Phil Lina, and he died on me. I had, I got this one like whenever, and it's been years since I figured out what I was going to put on this album. So I drew this one, right? It's my own drawing. So I figured if I ever get a tattoo, it'll be my own drawing. So I had to figure out what I want to get on this album. It's got to be something that I, you know, it's so, so like as soon as something I think is important enough for my goal. You know. <laughs> Sounds like an MTV contest.